New for Softimage 2014 is the advent of the Camera Sequencer, a series of tools that allows you to create, edit, retime, and output multiple cameras as though they were one continuous shot. This is very useful for pre-visualization as well as for final outputs of animations in general. The easiest place to get started with the sequencer is to access it from the View Layouts menu. The alternative places where you can access the components of the sequencer is under the View Animation, accessing the Camera Sequence Editor, and as well under the toolbars, the play controls and the tools themselves. I'm going to use the layouts to get myself started. You can see that when you open up the camera sequencer, you've got an editor sitting up along the top of your interface, a camera sequencer on the bottom left of the interface defined by this little blue stripe on the top left corner. This is the result of all of your camera cuts, so this would be where you view your, uh, your camera cuts, and you've got other viewports to help support building your cameras and editing them. Down along the bottom, you have your time controls. Now keep in mind that when you have your cameras animated, the scene time versus the time within the camera sequencer can be very different. So hitting play within the regular Softimage timeline will not play the camera sequencer for you. That's handled by the camera sequencer play controls. So let's get started. What I have in my scene, if I bring up an explorer, is a model containing all of the cameras that I'm going to use to define my cuts. They're labeled camera 2, camera 1, camera 3, and camera 4 respectively. To get started, I'm going to build what's called a shot clip in the camera sequencer. I can do that by accessing the plus button within the camera sequencer. So here I build one camera clip, one gigantic shot, which I can then cut up into various pieces. You can see that as soon as I built that shot, the contents of the camera sequencer changed. What I need to do is tell this shot clip which camera I plan to be using for my first cut. If I just take this D viewport here, and I switch this over to my first camera, this represents an overhead camera shot which I'd want to do some sort of a camera move into this uh, busy city street with some pedestrians on it. To do this, I'm going to select my shot clip, right click on it, and access the clip properties. From here I can define the camera that I want to use for my first cut. I'll use my pull down menu, and I'll point it towards my overhead camera. And as you can see now, the camera sequencer is synchronized with the shot that I've just built or with the camera that I've just defined. If I need to add consecutive cuts now, all I need to do is move ahead in my timeline, determine a place where I want to cut, and then split my clip. If you look under the clip menu in the camera sequencer, there's the option to split at current frame. There's your end hotkey. You also have the ability to trim before the current frame with your open and close brackets, trim before and after the current frame, as well as moving your existing clip to the current frame, to the end of the frame, um, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a cut on frame 200 by just tapping N. And so now I've got two shots. My first shot, again if I right click and access my properties, is defining the overhead shot, overhead shot camera 1. And we can see that the scene time as well as the sequence time happen to line up. For those of you familiar with the animation mixer, scaling the shot clip has a result in changing the global time from sequence time. I'm going to take my second shot clip and I'm going to define that as my second camera cut. Use my pull down menu and define that second cut. And of course as soon as I do that, because my, my camera sequencer timeline is at frame 199, we can see that we now cut to the second camera, which I can have a look at here. I would go through and define all of my cuts in this fashion. So again, pick a point in time where I want to switch cameras, split the clip, and define the new clip with my third camera. Right click, access my clip properties, and switch to the third camera. 
So I'll move forward 100 more frames. Use the end hotkey to split that clip up one more time. And there we go. So I have a 500 frame uh, sequence. And I'll assign this last clip to my camera 4. And there we go. Actually, if I right click and access the clip properties here, you'll again notice that scene time and sequence time are one and the same. If I decide that I need to trim down shot 3, I'll take advantage of some of the clip features and I'll trim after the current frame using my close bracket. So if I don't need these extra frames here, let's say I wanted to cut around frame 570, 580, I'm just going to go into clip and I'm going to trim after the current frame. So I've just trimmed off the extra thousand frames to my, uh, my scene there. Actually, just take the end frame here and set that to 580, just to spread this out a bit more, and also do the same thing for my my global time as well. Now, if I was to drag through my timeline, I'll just switch my camera here, uh, just to a regular sort of overview camera, and let's set the camera sequencer into texture mode. There we go. So now if I play back through my animation, you can see the crowd moving. And as we cut to the next shot, you can see how the camera sequencer picks up the next cut. until the third cut. And the fourth cut. Now at any time we can begin to trim some stuff down. So for example, uh, if I were to look closely at this, my characters on the first frame are in the default pose before the crowd uh, begins to animate or begins to simulate. So I may need to just trim this down a little bit so I catch the characters in action. I'll just move forward a couple of frames. Notice if I'm using the uh, back and forth arrow keys like I would in the normal timeline, this does not update camera sequencer time. You need to step through your camera you know, frame by frame. And in this way you can sync up scene time as well as sequence time. And I'll push this back and I'll trim the clip down. So I'm going to move this forward to about frame 6 and I'm going to go in and use trim before current frame. So I'll grab my clip and trim that down. Now I can just rearrange my extra shots. So I'll move this to frame 0 and butt these other clips up against. I can introduce camera animations in here as well. If I move to my overhead camera, so in my D viewport, if I switch this to my overhead cam, so I'm going to open up my Explorer and I'm going to access my overhead camera. So there it is right there. I'm going to set a couple of keyframes on this. So I'm going to move back in time to, let's say, about here. And let's begin to animate that camera move. So I'll set a keyframe on the camera root and interest. And we'll move to the end of our shot. I'll call that 192. And I'll do a little bit of a camera pushing. So I'll push in. Like so, you can see the camera updating here. Set a keyframe. Okay, so there we go. Another key. And I'll also add a little bit of a roll on here as well. I'll just take my camera and I'll access its constraints. And I'll access the up vector attribute. I'll come back to the first frame and set a keyframe on the roll. And do a little bit of a turn. So something like that. A little 20 degree push and turn. Okay, let's uh, take the attributes of the camera here and let's just set them as linear curves. So the curves linear. And if I pull back now, you'll notice that I've got my camera pushing in and everything has been updated nicely. So let's move ahead to the next uh, cut for our camera. So I'll come into here, I'll cut to frame 193. Of course here now, uh, I'm accessing shot 1. I right click on the clip properties. I'm now using Street Cam 2. 
So let's go and see what we can do with that camera. We'll switch to the appropriate camera, Street Cam 2. There we go. And perhaps all I want to do is just do a little bit of a uh, uh, an elevator or a crane down. So I'll find my camera 2, set a keyframe on frame 193. So we'll go there. I'll move forward to the end of my clip, which is 395. And I'll do a little bit of a move down. Like so. so we're getting closer to the action. Set another keyframe. There we go. So now I'm getting this elevator shot moving down. It seems like it got in front of the building there. Perhaps what I could do is again just take my camera just before the cut. Instead, maybe I'll just move it over this way a little bit. And we'll just key over top. See if we have that same problem. Uh, we're still having that problem, so I'll just add a, a breakdown. Let's come over and say around here. And I'll just add a little bit of arc to my camera move, pulling it out as I go. Let's see if that takes care of it. Okay, I think that works works okay. So moving on to our next cut, we've got our third camera starting on 396. And in this one I'm just going to do a simple uh, truck left to right. So I'll switch over to my third camera so I can edit it. Look at the traffic light. I'll find my camera that I want to edit. I'll grab the components of the camera, set a keyframe, and then find the end of my shot. And let's pull that camera over to the to the right just a little bit. Let's say something like that. Set a keyframe there. And then for our final camera shot, let's uh, move ahead to frame 495. For our fourth and final cut, access the telephoto route. And let's just jump in here, set some keyframes, select the camera, switch over to our fourth camera. And for this one, I'm just going to do a little bit of a push in. So I'll Set a keyframe, move to the end of my timeline, do a little bit of a push in here. And we'll also open up the lens uh, a little bit more as well. Set a keyframe, let's access the camera's attributes. Just click on the camera itself. I want to keyframe the field of view. So, yep, let's set that at 495. And I'll go in and keyframe the field of view. So we'll go for a 22 degree field of view and we'll open that lens even more. So I'll set a keyframe there as well. And the final thing I'm going to do is just make all of these camera movements linear except for this, uh, this last one. So I'll select all of my camera attributes. Grab all the curves and just set them to uh, to linear. And that should do it. So I've gone ahead and defined all of my appropriate cuts. Now, of course, what I'd want to do is I'd want to convert this entire sequence of my four camera cuts uh, and bake them down into a single camera. So to do that, I'm going to record or plot my sequence of cameras. I'll do a plot. But before I do that, perhaps what I want to do is trim these clips down a little bit more. As I mentioned, as I was going through setting up the initial shots, you can see that I have remapped scene time to sequence time. But if I find that these shots are a little bit slow, I can scale the clip. And as we do that, you can see that we're actually scaling the clip up 200%. So we're increasing the speed of that clip. Just move these clips around. So shot one now which originally in scene time was 199 to 402, has now been retimed in sequence time to 100 to 304. And of course, 
it's currently a scale of one. But if I middle click and drag, I can cut that one down. Reproportion this clip. So very quickly, you can see that scene time and sequence time lose their relationship to one another. But by the time I bake in the clips, everything should be OK. So I now have a 260 frame sequence from what was once a 585 frame sequence. So now I'll go and do the plot. I'm going to plot from frame 1 to frame 267. We'll give it a name. So we'll call it the sequencer camera plot, and we'll apply the plotted animations to the new camera. So this cannot be undone, so you want to be uh, you know, obviously pretty sure of what you're doing. We'll plot out the sequencer camera. There we go. There's my animation. And if we have a look at our final camera animation, camera. And let's switch over to our sequencer camera plot. There we go. Switch that over into textured mode. And so if I was to play this back, we now have our sequencer time remapped to scene time. actors. And our cuts will now be incorporated into our uh, into our shots. So that's the camera sequencer. It's a uh, pretty interesting tool. Very useful, like as I said, for dealing with pre-visualization and uh, outputting final uh, camera hookups within a single scene. All new for Softimage 2014.